Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm so excited to show you this game. This is from the bronze match of the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. I'm playing against Jason. It is a best of three match. I have We've already played game one. I'll pause for a second in case you haven't seen game one yet. I won game one as Shadow and we are playing a free people military victory challenge. And the rules of the challenge are Shadow will allocate three eyes on round one. Free people will have two tokens, action tokens. And free people must separate at least nine levels of companions before moving the fellowship for the first time. So going into it, cards like will look high are going to be very valuable and saved as reinforcements for defending a stronghold. This is a ridiculously long game. This might be the longest game I've ever played, honestly. It was four and a half hours to play it, and we started it at like 11 p.m. So uh, let's jump in. You will see what happens. There are twists, there are turns. It's an exciting one. Uh, I am free people. I am committed to separating companions from the fellowship, and unlike Jason, who got a much worse role round one when he was playing as free people, I got an excellent role as free people. This is exactly the sort of role where in a normal situation without any sort of agreement with uh, Shadow in advance, if you get this role and uh, you can get Aragorn turn one, I think it's often worth it. You do have to give, in this situation, I will have to give uh, shadow a ring to be able to crown Aragorn turn one, but it's certainly worth it, um, at least in my opinion, and certainly if, if that's the rules of the game you're playing. So uh, I start by uh, drawing a strategy card, and my hope was to draw Fear of Fire Foes or Book of Mazarbal, which would have allowed me to crown Aragorn and get one of those nations to war and not give a ring. Obviously, the chances of drawing that were low, only about you know, 10%, but a little less than that. But it seemed, you know, worth trying. And I'm happy enough to see Celeborns. That's a that's a very useful card to have early. All right. So uh, Jason starts drawing strategy cards. And uh, I separate all the companions. I separate Strider, Legolas, Gimli, and Boromir. That's nine, nine levels. And... Uh, that way, the Gandalf and the Hobbits can all soak up corruption but still re-enter play and be useful uh, for military activities. All right, so uh, Jason musters Sauron to war, and they can anticipate that I will be getting, most likely giving him a ring, uh, and therefore... He could have mustered Isengard toward war and then gotten uh, Saruman turn one. But he, um, I talked with him after the game and he said he really wanted to put pressure on Gondor as soon as possible, knowing that Aragorn and Boromir were going to be down there and wanted to try and, uh, you know, just put pressure on, on Gondor and also was happy to sort of save the ring, even if it means delaying Saruman by a turn. He gets to have a ring, which is a very useful uh, strategic option. So uh, I move companions around. I think about sending Gimli east, uh, west, but then decide to go east because I figure I will likely lose hobbits uh, relatively early on and can send them to the Shire or Bree to be able to activate Fear Fire Foes if and when I draw that card to put the north to war. And this way Gimli can head up to Erebor uh, and defend the dew line and also potentially use his ability to muster the dwarves to war. So that's my thinking. And uh, then Jason gets armies organized in Gorgoroth, a full stack of 10 units there. I give him a ring, move companions again, and then he draws another strategy card. Mustering of a long planned war played pretty rarely in normal games, but in free people military victory attempts, it's often useful to be able to put a bunch of units in Mordor if free people are going for Mordor. So I suspect he will uh, end up potentially saving that and playing it as a card effect. So um, 
you know, Athalos, very useful both to heal the Fellowship, obviously more useful in Strider's Guide, but still not bad, expected to heal one, even with uh, a non-Strider Guide. And then obviously Andril is extremely powerful combat effect. If you saw game one, Jason used Andril extremely effectively uh, in a siege with Aragorn uh, to take over Minus Morgul, actually. So uh, I'm very happy to see this card. Uh, I'll save it for the right moment, but... All right, and then Scouts. Scouts, very useful card for free people. All right, Jason uh, allocates no eyes, which is obviously correct if you know your opponent is going for a military victory attempt. But uh, just to be clear, we did not specify any other restrictions. So theoretically, the ring could still be destroyed. Uh, typically, if you remove seven or nine um, levels worth of corruption, uh, protection from the fellowship on turn one, maybe you won't be able to destroy the ring as easily, but uh, it is it is allowed. And I think just as generally, whenever you're going for a military victory attempt as free people, still having some hope of ring destruction alive is useful because unless Shadow gets extremely poor rolls, if all they're trying to do is defend militarily, they probably can if they don't ever have to worry about you destroying the ring. And similarly, if Shadow has no worries that you will ever go for a military victory, they can certainly stop you from destroying the ring by allocating, you know, maximum eyes every round. And so I think one of the beautiful things about War of the Ring is this, this tension between the military side and the ring side, and, and there's an ebb and flow and, and, and a push and pull that changes. It's not, it's not always um, consistent for every turn of the game. It, you, you can vary it. All right. In any case, I am um, okay with this roll. Obviously, three Palantirs is a little more than I would like. Because Shadow does not yet have a minion, I can't really get Gandalf the white unless I want to separate him. And uh, I'm not in such a rush militarily that I want to do that. Um, I... You know, I could have done that turn one, knowing that we were going for a military challenge, but I like the chance for Gandalf to be able to soak up a little extra corruption to get the Fellowship moving uh, early on and make it hopefully past Moria. And then um, and then he goes his merry way and comes back as Gandalf the White. I'm not sure if that's right. I have seen other players just separate Gandalf early on, turn one, and uh, and then just turn him from, from gray to white without ever killing him. So um, given that I rolled all these Palantirs, it's obviously pr pretty nice to have Gandalf in the Fellowship. I'm going to get to draw a bunch of cards. I'm happy to play Aomer. I'm happy to play Celeborns. That's going to be a total drawing of three other strategy cards. Hopefully I'll get something else that I want to play. And these Palantirs won't, won't go to waste. All right. I start by playing Aomer. I don't know. Maybe I should just play Celeborns. This is super minor, but uh, I think it probably was better to play Celeborns. Um, because I get to draw two cards instead of one, and I get to see what I get, and it'll help me plan out my turn better. Anyway, I redraw into Cairdan's ships. Not useful right now. Because Legolas is in Lorien, I know that um, even if I don't end up having another playable uh, strategy card, I can always turn uh, any of these dice into an, a muster. Uh, that works both for Gondor and for um, and for Lorien uh, and for uh, elves. So... Um, anyway, Cairdans can be useful to um, <clears throat> to defend in in Gondor, and also significantly, you can recruit them in a coastal region containing a free people's army. So if you're going for a military victory, it actually lets you reinforce Umbar. If you're going for Umbar, so all right. Um, with Boromir in Minas Tirith, generally, I'm going to try and get. Gondor to war my, myself and muster up in Gondor and then let the elven force pool defend the elven strongholds and typically will not play Cairdan's ships for the card effect unless I need it to help hold Umbar, in which case it's extremely powerful <laughs> to be able to help hold Umbar. So uh, okay to see it. Um, all right, so now I play... Uh, so what did, uh, what did Jason do? Jason mustered... Um, Isengard to war. That makes sense. And um, I play Celeborns now. That's fine. I draw Path of the Woes is not useful. And Dane Ironfoot's guard. That's fine. I can I can play Dane. And um, 
he moves directly from Gorgoroth to Minas Morgul. This is the fastest route to Minas Tirith, and he's just trying to get Gondor under siege uh, before I have a chance to muster up. Maybe this was an error on my part, and what I should have been doing was using these Palantir dice to use Boromir's ability to muster Gondor to war. And by the way, Gondor is active because Aragorn and Boromir activate uh, Gondor. So I could have used two dice to get Gondor to war and then furthermore um, use this Will of the West to start mustering up in Minas Tirith and just generally muster up Gondor uh, really fast. So maybe I should have done that foreseeing that this army is coming in. Um, you know, I I felt like I had pretty productive uses of those Palantirs getting units on the board. I mean, I just got, you know, a bunch of uh, hit points worth of units on the board and uh, cycled more stra strategy cards to hopefully get something useful. So uh, I play Dane and I get Swords and Eriador. Not really what I want. Uh, what I really want is Fearfire Foes or a Book of Mazarbul. Those can be very powerful early game and um, accelerate my military attacks. So Jason plays Half Orcs and Goblin Men. You know, he had a bunch of extra cards. Um, he could have played Worn with Sorrow and Toil here. Seeing that the Fellowship is, you know, likely going to move. Um, you know, in this case, it would have gotten rid of Athelos or Bilbo's Song which are powerful cards to get rid of. Um, that's interesting. I he I guess he's just, he, he's worried about military is what he's worried about. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, so he plays it in Dol Guldur. Um, this is, the, the other thing about this, this Half Orcs and Goblin Men, it's a powerful defensive ability because you can use it to muster into Siege as Shadow. So depending on where free people attack, if they commit to an attack someplace, you can play Half Orcs and Goblin Men somewhere. Um, so I might have been tempted to hold this a little bit longer. I mean, he did have Ulug High and Orcs Multiplying again, so it, it can make uh dull gold are pretty formidable and head up to uh woodland realm maybe or just air uh you know the the um dew is looking a little less appealing because of dane and because of gimli but yeah the other thing is you kind of want to as shadow um given the corruption damage that the free people player basically did to themselves nine corruption damage uh you want to cut off their ability to heal. So maybe it makes sense to go after Lorien. Um, obviously with a companion and with Celeborns, it's not that attractive of, an atar of a target. Uh, but you got to do something. I mean, <laughs> you have to make some progress. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe Warren with Sauron Toil, I might have considered playing it just to get rid of one character card. It feels a little... A little bit of a waste. So I understand why uh, Jason played um, Half Orcs and Goblin Men. Okay, so now I move the Fellowship and uh, I'm hit right away, <laughs> right at the beginning. And, uh, you know, on one hand, yes, I want to get hit and lose Gandalf at some point. Um, but on the other hand, like, there's no, there's no Saruman. So I'm not going to get Gandalf this round, and there's no guarantee I'm going to get a Will of the West next round. So I wouldn't have minded being safe on that hit. Uh, and then I get revealed with an eye, which is super annoying. Uh, you know, that's just... Yeah, okay. Um, and so now what do you do? Uh, on one hand, getting rid of Gandalf early is useful because then you can bring him back. On the other hand, I've done a lot of corruption damage to myself, so if I want to keep ring the hopes of the ring alive, destroying the ring, I need to take corruption efficiently and ideally lose Gandalf to one of these threes, or, or at least a two. So um, in the end, uh, I think I end up taking a random companion here. I think about Gandalf, and then I say, you know what, I'll, I'm going to take a random. Because I know I've cycled some strategy cards. I can continue to cycle some strategy cards and hopefully draw into Fearfire Foes or uh, Book of Mazarbul. And so if I can get a Hobbit out here, if I lose Gandalf, okay, I lose Gandalf. 
Uh, it's not the most efficient corruption use, but then at least I can bring him back sooner. Uh, and if I get a hobbit, then that's more f efficient corruption use. And um, and then uh, I will be able to maybe get fear fire foes. So, um, and by the way, if Warren with Sauron Toy was in play and I lose a random hobbit, which is what happens, I lose Pippin, uh, then, and Pippin goes to South Downs, then I would actually lose a card because I'm not using the guide ability. I'm taking Pippin as a casualty. And then he lives because of his non-guide ability, which is take them alive. Okay. Um, so that's that. Pippin ends up in South Downs and I lost corruption efficiently. My opponent, uh, Jason, gets uh, Saruman in play and now I hide the Fellowship. I should probably speed up this video because if I analyze it at this depth at every round, we're going to be here for a really long time. All right. They play on, on, they win. Very reasonable. All right. I get an Ent and Grimbjorn. So this is a tricky uh, decision, what to discard. Uh, obviously, getting Ents is, can be very powerful in Rohan. And uh, I think I end up discarding this because this is a defensive one. This is the, the defensive one. And I kind of want to be on the offense for military. So I think I'm willing to discard this um, and maybe Swords and Ariador. I like having two scouts Jason probably will not expect me to have two scouts so early. And scouts are just a very powerful uh, defensive technique. If you need to run with Aragorn or if they try and attack you, it's just, it's very flexible. So I get rid of Ents and Path of the Woes. Interesting. So I kept Swords and Ariador, I guess because I wanted to have the option to cycle. Uh, because that was, that's literally my only playable strategy card, assuming I do not want to play... Um, Grimbjorn as the card effect, which I don't because Scouts is too good. And also, screw it, Mordor. Scouts is just an incredibly powerful uh, combat effect uh, when you're going for a military victory, also when you're playing defensively uh, a normal ring victory. But um, yeah, there are going to be army attacks all over the board all the time. So Scouts can be very useful. Uh, interesting. So I got rid of Path of the Woes. It hurts a little bit to get rid of that. It can be a very sneaky play. Uh, certainly I want to get Rohan to war at some point. Um, so <clears throat> I do like it, but I guess I was just worried about not having any strategy card to play. Might have been a mistake. Sudden Strike is a better combat effect in advantageous position when you're going for active military because uh, advantageous position only works on the defense. It doesn't work if you're attacking Shadow Strongholds. So, all right, that might have been a minor inaccuracy there. All right, allocates one eye, rolls one more. I get this ridiculous roll. So when you're trying to kill off Gandalf, like what more can you ask for? Like, I, I think this is a perfect roll. Uh, maybe a muster, I guess, but like, this is perfect. I, I just, I, it's great. So I'm just going to move and move and move and move until I can kill off Gandalf and hopefully I'll kill him off to a three. And then I'm going to get him on turn three. So turn one Aragorn, turn three Gandalf is very good. Um, that said, I have to be a little careful because, uh, Jason has f five attacks here and... Uh, a ring, so effectively it could be six attacks. This army in Minus Morgul can come besiege Minas Tirith, and I do not want to get Aragorn trapped in a siege this early on. I have dead men to play. I have shenanigans to cause. I'm not going to let him get trapped. So I need to plan on saving a character die, potentially to moving Aragorn, or fighting a field battle in Minas Tirith, and then retreating with scouts to Lasarnak but I have to be careful that he won't get um, surrounded. So here we go. I start moving right away instead of passing because I want to see how the hunt goes and when I manage to kill off Gandalf. So I move and I get hit right away. I wouldn't have minded one more safe move. <laughs> I'm getting hit every time. Uh, and again, it's a one reveal, which I do not want to see because now I'm going to waste this character die instead of being able to run away with Aragorn. Um... I'm going to hide the fellowship. So I could take a random here, but instead what I decide to do is take one damage um, 
directly because I can heal it in Lorien, probably, assuming Lorien doesn't fall too fast. And I know that I'm going to be able to hide and move again. And if I move on that second time, so I'm going to hide with my second die, I'm going to move with my third die, killing off Gandalf. I'm going to run away with uh, Strider with or Aragorn with my fourth die, and I'm going to bring Gandalf back with my fifth die. That's my thinking. I'm likely to get hit, and um, I want to be able to lose corruption more efficiently with Gandalf because I'm just I'm just trying to be cautious with my corruption uh, count. Okay, and now Jason, you know, as planned, moving in to attack um, Gondor, and you know, obviously, I don't, I don't love this, but uh, what can I do? You know, one of the things that happens in military victory, you don't need to hold every single stronghold. You just need to be able to threaten four victory points as free people before Shadow can threaten 10. And if you're doing that consistently, then they have to regularly respond to your threats instead of going after their own objectives. So um, my plan generally is build up big armies, try and defend strongholds while also making military threats, while also moving the fellowship slow and steady. So we'll see how well that works. I hide. Uh, armies move along, and uh, they're covering Minas Morgul. They're coming outside of uh, Lorien, preparing to attack it, and I move. And at this point, I would, wouldn't would mind getting hit and, uh, you know, getting a three. That'd be nice. Uh, but I missed here. So, okay, it is nice to be missed over um, Moria. Interestingly, they have Foul Thing right here. So I guess they're just figuring that corruption is not a real issue. They don't want to give me, like they're not worried about putting too much corruption pressure on me. They're gonna let me move myself and try and kill off Gandalf. And uh, they don't want to accidentally get Gandalf with a three from Foul Thing because then I can then just bring him back right away. I don't know. Given the hunt pool and given that I've drawn two, there have been two eyes drawn already, Foul Thing is like, you could get one of these zeros or ones or this two. And, and then I get revealed into Moria. So on one hand, I get it. You don't want to give free people... Um, Gandalf, turn three, and you want to threaten to take, uh, to basically put a lot of pressure on Strider and, and Gondor. So I get it. But this, this was an interesting, a very interesting decision point. There were a few ways that Shadow could have put even more corruption pressure on on the free people, even after the military. And I and I think this often happens with military that, you know, Shadow needs to deal with the military threats. If they continue to put total, you know, uh, devote many extra dice to dealing corruption damage, then, you know, free people will sort of draw ahead uh, in the arms race. And uh, so it is, it is definitely a balance. Okay, anyway, so notably... They had Foul Thing from the Deep. They could have played it here with a uh, five, with he, he could have played it with a five out of 14 chance of revealing the Fellowship and getting an extra tile. But instead, uh, focused on military to take out, uh, to trap Aragorn because he sees that if I move again with this character die to try and kill off Gandalf, then uh, Minas Tirith could be besieged. So, um, Asgiliath gets attacked. I do not play my scouts now. I'm saving them for uh, Aragorn to be able to survive these attacks. There are possibly three attacks coming at Aragorn, and probably five hit points with advantageous position is probably enough to keep him alive. And I really would love to get Gandalf this turn while I have this Will of the West. But... Um, I definitely need to save the scouts for that and just hope that these units in Asgiliath survive. Uh, they do not. <laughs> they are slaughtered and they do no damage back to these orcs. All right. And now I move the fellowship again because I would really like to know if Gandalf is dying this round. If I get missed again here or somehow Gandalf does not die right now, then um, 
then I would love to know that I have this Will of the West available to uh, keep Aragorn alive. So I move a third time. I did manage to move three times this round, and uh, I do get hit, and it's a zero reveal. So I would have much prefer a three instead of continuing to have to use dice to hide. And by the way, these character dice, like those are straight up musters. I could be mustering elves to war. I could have been mustering uh, Gondor to war with a single character die and then any other die after that. I can be mustering dwarves to war. So these reveals are costing me. They're slowing me down. I have productive uses for any die. Um, all right, so I get revealed again and um, I would love a three, uh, but it's a one. So at least a little silver lining. It's a one reveal instead of a, a regular one. But um, I, I mean, I have to lose Gandalf here. So I have the will of the West. I'm not going to wait when I even longer to try and lose Gandalf more efficiently when I have a chance to get him now. So um, I'm, I'm going to do that and just hope that Aragorn can, um, can hold. So... Um, Gandalf dies to a one. Okay. Maybe I could have killed him off way back in Fords of Brunin, but you know, you don't know that all those ones are going to get drawn. Uh, so I, I, you know, I think that was strategically right, even if it turned out to not have much of an effect. All right. Now, my opponent, uh, Jason, moves one army into Druden Forest and then one army from Far Harad to Near Harad. And I was quite nervous seeing this. Druid and Forest move because if Jason also moved a unit instead of Far Harad to Nirhad, but into Lasarnach, now Aragorn is surrounded and my scouts does not work because I just, there's no place for me to retreat. Even if I'm willing to move out of Minas Tirith and give up two victory points, which I would have been able to, willing to do, um, they can't. So the reason why they did this was they did not want to put Gondor to war. So if you take Lasarnach, then Gondor is at war, and then I can use the Will of the West to attack out with Aragorn to to Druid and Forest or to Lasarnach. And then if I have a scouts, you know, it's just this army is loose and it's a mess for Shadow. So uh basically what he's trying to do is contain Aragorn to Minas Tirith, either going into siege, which would be great for Shadow. I'm not going to do that. Or counting on me having one scout at this point, I'm going to play scouts to Lasarnak, but then he'll be able to attack me again and, and sort of contain me. And so that's what this army is doing coming up from um, Far Harad to Near Harad. So I think this does make sense. Uh, the the I don't know that it's that bad to put Gondor to war because then I still have to use this Will of the West to get Strider and Aragorn out of there. I mean, Aragorn and, and Bormir out of there instead of getting Gandalf. And I really just want to get Gandalf. So anyway, uh, that's what he did. And now attacks into Minas Tirith does not have a swarm of bats. So, you know, I'm obviously worried about that, but uh, he, I play, I have a field battle. He plays a character card. And so with the character card, I guess it makes sense to play it. You have too many cards in hand anyway. Uh, Warren Osar and Toil is totally useless. So, uh, but I have a Scouts. So uh, I'm very happy to not see the strategy card. I play Scouts. I give up Minas Tirith and uh, Aragorn and Boromir live to fight another day. And now knowing that I have another Scouts in my hand and knowing that if they had Swarm of Bats, they probably would have played it round one. And even if they do have Swarm of Bats, I'm still going to probably not take five hits. Uh... I am going to get Gandalf. I'm very happy to have Gandalf turn three. That's going to give me plenty of options uh, for the rest of the game. So uh, also my opponent, right. So there's a nation at war, which is Gondor, and they have not yet gotten the Witch King. And uh, they could be using this ring to get the Witch King, but I suspect they're going to try and take out Aragorn. And uh, they do. So they attack Aragorn. I joke about attacking from Minas Tirith, but obviously they're attacking from Mesgiliath. And um, and then they play this deadly strife, but I have a second scouts. So they really had some real chances of taking him out. And I understand why they would uh, he would use the ring um, at that point. 
but I have two scouts. I drew eight cards. I don't know exactly what the odds are of having two scouts, but I had eight, eight strategy cards. So, all right. A little sad for Shadow to see the Deadly Strife be used to no effect. And now Pilar Gear is just going to be very hard for Shadow to crack. Uh, it's going to take a lot of reinforcements. The South Rounds and Easterlings aren't at war. I can muster up now. Uh, I have a lot of units, Gondorian units to muster. So, all right, next round, I have six dice to their eight. I'm very happy to see that. They, um, they get a red tile and storm crow and uh, I get another scouts. So I'm kind of excited about that because there's no, no way they're going to expect me to have all three scouts so early. And this gray company is quite useful. It can let me draw a lot of cards. It does remove a total of one hit point from the force pool uh, and it draws me a bunch of cards. I don't know that I am in a real rush to draw a bunch of strategy cards. On one hand, I would like to to get Fear Fire Foes uh, or Book of Mazarbul, but on the other hand, I have plenty of mustering to do in Gondor as soon as possible, so we'll see what I roll. Uh, they roll two eyes, and I'm always happy to see them roll eyes. That's great. And I get this very flexible roll. Uh, South Rounds and Easterlings are not at war yet, so I'm not particularly worried about two Wills of the West, and uh, I just start mustering up. So Elite and Pilar gear, they move the South Rounds and Easterlings and are just sort of filling up this space. They have a regular in South of filling in. They're just they're just making it hard. If I have through a, through a day and a night, they want to make it harder for me to uh, move my armies around. And uh, and then they move. All oh, right, I hide the Fellowship. Right. So my plan is get into Lorien, heal this one corruption and then uh, move along, and, and that'll be fine. And uh, and then maybe go for some military shenanigans, right? So they attack into Lorien. I go into Siege, obviously, and then um, I get another Gondor elite into Pilar gear using my Will of the West, and they get the Witch King finally. And now that they have the Witch King and Asgiliath, they have four leadership there. And I want Pilar gear to hold as long as possible. So I um, move Gandalf. I move companions. So now, and I wanted to do that anyway because now Gimli can be an Erebor. I can start using Gimli's ability to get the dwarves to war. And um, I move uh, Pippin towards the Shire because, you know, Pippin wants to go back home. This He doesn't want to be in this war. Uh, you know, let's just go back home, Pippin says. Everybody else can do other things. Um, and, uh, that's fine. Nice for Pippin. Maybe he'll make it home someday. And now, and now my opponent plays Falthing. And, uh, that's interesting to me. I, you know, the only tile that reveals me is the zero reveal. Everything else is not going to reveal me, uh, because of Gollum's ability. And, um... I guess they just don't have that much else to do with their character dice. They don't want to necessarily move these armies around yet, and they don't really want to attack yet. So, okay, I get that. Makes sense. And um, they get a one. So, you know, I, that's the cost of those early eyes as, as free people. On one hand, you know, the eyes are good in some ways because it keeps the hunt pool big otherwise if you eventually make it to Mordor but on the other hand it makes these tile drawing cards like Foul Thing and Orc Patrol and Isildur's Bane quite um, just more likely to hit. So this is really the perfect tile to draw on Foul Thing but I only have uh, Mary left so Mary obviously separates to Parth Celebrant and uh, will allow me to get him into Fangorn with the next character uh, or um, next time I move companions around. I will say that was nice timing because if I, I was about to move and um, actually I wasn't about to move. I'm going to wait until the last action of the turn to move because that way if I get revealed and like with a get hit and get like a three or something like that, I can reveal using Gollum's ability. So in any case, I muster more in Pilar gear, and um, my opponent moves Nazgul around because what else can they do? I guess they could... I'm a little surprised they didn't play Give It To Us. Were they really that worried about losing the Witch King? I don't 
think so. In Osgiliath, it's possible. But I couldn't press the attack because otherwise the Witch King could retreat to West Rondor. I guess they're just worried about this army doing really mean things and just marching into Mordor. It certainly could march into Mordor. And, and maybe I should have done that. Um, you know, one of the very tricky things with military victory is when do you go for it? And, um, and I guess my general feeling is if you can continue to make steady progress with the fellowship and then only go for it when you really have two strongholds in sight, that's better. Like right now I could certainly march this army through us Gileath into, um, into Mordor and maybe take one of these strongholds, but but then I only have one, and that doesn't win me the game. And then it gives you know Shadow time to come back and go you know just kill off these units. So I kind of just want to sit here and hold and wait wait for a bad roll and have bigger armies on the board. You know, get the dwarves to war, and then Gimli can come in and do stuff. So that's my thinking. Uh, and now I move the fellowship, and you know they do get five dice, so they have a good chance of hitting me. Uh, they they do hit me, and uh, it's a one. So on one hand, I would rather not get hit at all. Like the one is just a beautiful tile when you have Gollum um, as guide. But like for Mordor, right? I want to leave these in the pool in Mordor. Um, but whatever, that happens. So I get hit and um, they get a reroll, but it, it, he gets a reroll, but it doesn't matter because uh, it, an eye tile wasn't drawn. So... Anyway, uh, I take the corruption, and uh, my plan is just to heal in Lorien for a couple turns. There's no way this army is taking out Lorien anytime soon, so I'm going to be able to heal twice, and that's fine. Um, okay. I got through a day and a night and another Ent card. So this is a tough, really tough choice for me, what to hold and what to keep. Um Obviously, with Gandalf now in play, and I can easily get um, Mary to Fangorn, it would be nice to have Ents. And this Ents Rage card is quite good. And by the way, I do have the Red Arrow, which is uh, makes it easier for me to get Rohan to war. So um, these are just really tough choices. I think I'm willing to get rid of Swords and Eriador, but what's the other card I discard? Athelos is great healing and attacking. Bilbo Song is amazing healing. Cairdon Ships is very flexible and a good combat effect if I have a bunch of elites. Grey Company is really good defense. I have three companions here now. And it draws me strategy cards. Man, I, I just don't know. I think I end up getting rid of Swords and Eriador and Ents. Swords and Eriador and Ents, yeah. And my opponent, by the way, got rid of um, give it to us, which I guess they're just thinking there's no way he's making it to Mordor, but like lidless, I like, yeah, he could have played give it to us last round. So, you know, when you're staring at this giant army, are you really thinking that free people is ever going to get to Mordor? Probably not. But especially with how the hunt has been going already, um, but, yeah, red tiles can be good. I don't know. It's it's hard. It's really hard to know. One of the things about military victory attempts is that it will typically cause Shadow to uh, not play as many corruption cards on the Fellowship because you do so much corruption damage to yourself and because you are, um, you know, making military threats. So they have to focus on that. All right, anyway, I declare in Lorien and heal one. They allocate an eye. They roll one more and get this very nice roll. They need the musters to get Southrons and Easterlings to war, and then it's just a bunch of attacks. So this is this is a great roll. And uh, I get a good roll too. Uh, I'm perfectly happy with more musters. I can use the Palantir productively with the Red Arrow. Um, so this is good for me. And uh, they get the Southrons and Easterlings towards war. I muster again in Pelargir and Dol Amroth. I want to let this army, Gandalf's army and Aragorn's army, roam somewhere and threaten things. So I want it to be big. I want to defend Dol Amroth as well so that it does not 
um, fall too easily. And, um, and I want to use the Gondor reinforcement pool efficiently. So I'm going to get these regulars in. I'm going to try and hold Pelargir for a bit. And then I'm going to use the time to probably, I'm guessing, get Rohan to war uh, and start mustering up Rohan. So I just want to get my units on the board and make threats and then see what happens. And hopefully Shadow will roll uh, poorly. So uh, Jason moved a regular from West Herondor to Asgiliath. And that's pretty clever because that means if I attack to Asgiliath, which I certainly would have considered, um, it would advance the Southrons and Easterlings towards war because they are not yet at war, which is a very rare thing, but that's a really cool play. Very, very clever. A nice use of a army die, and it just keeps this army in check in Pilar gear unless I want to give him a free muster, which I do not. And it gives him time to bring these armies over from South Rune to uh, Ash Mountains, to Daggerlad, to North Athelion, and we'll meet up with the Witch King very nicely. And Jason has um, Mustering of Long Planned War, which I also had in game one. And uh, yeah, it's just a useful mustering card. So uh, Muster's an elite in Morinon. Always nice to have some elites with you in battle. I get uh, an extra leader in Pelargir because I want the... Um, army to have a full five leadership, even if Gandalf is shining. So that's why it, it shows six. And then I get another regular in Dol Amroth. And, uh, and the Gondorian force pool has only three regulars left. I want to save a few regulars for um, Dead Men of Dunharrow. Uh, that can be really nice. It lets me retake Pilar gear. And uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so the, uh, he moves armies, merges up in Daggerlad. I play the red arrow now, which gives me uh, a free muster and just more units in uh, Rohan. And then he's just moving armies in, uh, Dagger Lad to North Athelion. Basically, he feels like he needs to deal with this army um, in Pelargir, which he's absolutely right. And even if he has to throw a bunch of units at it, eventually he's going to whittle me down and I'm going to run out of units and he, he can just muster them up again. So I muster Rohan one more towards war with that will of the West. And then he gets the Southrons and Easterlings to war. And now I use Gimli's ability to get the dwarves to war. So I'm not super worried about getting the elves to war. Um, first, I want, I think, to get the dwarves to war. Maybe it would have been better to get the elves to war. I'm not, I'm not sure. I want the dwarves. All right. And then... He attacks from West Herondor into Pelargir. Gandalf is shining. He has only five dice, no rerolls against a six. And I have 10 dice on fives. So, uh, you know, he doesn't play a card. And um, I I play Kierden's ships because... I want to damage this army as quickly as possible so they stop attacking me. And I just don't think that I want to hold it in my hand. These other cards I do want to hold in my hand. So um, I get two hits on the pre-combat from charge. And uh, I get three more hits on my combat roll, which is close to what you would expect with ten with five dice with five re-rolls uh, hitting on fives. So I did five damage that round of combat and they did none to me because they didn't roll any sixes. So this is the power of having Gandalf there. And um, this is the power of being in Pilar gear because I can muster back after they, I mean, I am limited in the amount of mustering I can do. I only have three more hit points left, but uh, I can muster back. So that in many ways is better than trying to defend a stronghold because I can't muster in a stronghold once I'm in siege. And if I'm not in siege, they hit me on a five or six like anywhere else. So Pilar gear, Dale, Edoras, um, the Shire, uh, these are useful places to hold, uh, to, to hold a big army. All right. He plays a strategy, uh, a character card here, which makes me a little nervous. Okay, words of power on Gandalf. So he gets two extra rolls and hits on a five or six. Gets one hit against me and I get 
four hits back. So that army and those two Nazgul are annihilated. I just did nine hit points of damage and took only one in return. So obviously that went my way. Um, happy to see heroic death. If I needed to heal more, I could heal more, but I don't need to heal more in Lorien. Um, and I generally want to save that for the combat effect. All right, allocates no eyes, which is correct because I didn't move, and rolls two, and then I get, again, this very flexible roll. So I use um, the Will of the West to muster. I just want to muster, 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 get units on the board, make threats. Um, and then he plays Stormcrow on the Dwarves. I don't mind losing this regular because I want to muster up the Dwarves, uh, get them to war. Also, by the way, I would love at some point to see Fearfire Foes or Book of Mazarbul. That would be very efficient. And uh, he draws a strategy card. I um, move the Fellowship because the Fellowship is healthy. And so my strategy is move once a turn. Just move once a turn. And uh, he does get three dice. He hits me and draws a two. So, you know, it would be nice to not get hit when I move, <laughs> but, you know, that's how it goes. So the two. Uh, I really thought about taking two and then declaring again in Lorien at the start of next round and just healing, healing it up, just waiting two more rounds. Maybe that's the right play. Instead, because he only has one character card and... Um, he only has one pound here. I just thought, you know what? I'll, I'll just take the one corruption. I do have um, Bilbo's song in hand. I do have Athelos in hand. Um, and I want to be making progress. So, excuse me. So that's my plan. We stayed up until 4. I was up until 4 a.m. last night playing this game. So I'm still a little tired, but I wanted to do the video. All right, here we go. Um... So I reveal, I'm using Gollum's ability. I um, saved one corruption so far with Gollum. Let's try and keep track. I'm revealed in Parth Celebrant, but I have the dice to hide again. Um, so reinforcements in Orthanc. I hide the Fellowship. They muster in Umbar. I muster Rohan to war here because I would like to start mustering up Rohan. Just I'm I'm close to out of mustering pool in uh, Gondor, so time to move to a new faction and nation and start to muster there. So because Rohan is now at war, they um, attack into the fords because they don't I guess want me mustering up too much in Helm's Deep, and um, they play Deadly Strife, which is really nice. It's a great great play there. And wipe out Ford's Vise. And I would have loved to keep those units alive in that leader, but that's how it goes. They only move one regular unit into Ford's Vise. And I'm not, I guess they're just worried about Ents because at any point I could move, um, I could move Mary into Fangorn. So, all right. I muster a Rohan regular in Helm's Deep and a regular in Edoras. I just want to muster up. They muster uh, in Orthanc, and then I muster some more in Rohan. And then they play Mustering of a Long Planned War. That makes sense. And uh, and then I use Gimli's ability. I'm like, I'm not going to draw Book of Mazarbul. Okay, you know, maybe I'll still draw it now, but if I don't, at least I'm still making progress towards getting dwarves to war. I want to create another threat, basically. I want a powerful army up north, so they have to try and defend Mount Gundabad and Old Golder, and I want our powerful powerful army down south. I am kicking myself a little bit about playing the charge because I could potentially go after Umbar, and uh, that would have been pretty nice. Happy to see another brave stand. That can be very powerful with... Aragorn's army and uh, Thrindle's archers, good, but I'm not sure that I need it. I'm guessing I get rid of that. They allocate one eye. I do get rid of Thrindle's. You know, I don't want Woodland Realm to be besieged and lost too early, but they are very worried about 
leaving their strongholds, uh, appropriately worried about leaving their strongholds undefended. Because with any two dice, I can guarantee you'd get dwarves to war, and then I have like a big army in, in Erebor. So if you leave to try and take Woodland Realm, I can just go right by you. I, and I have through a day and a night, and Gimli is with them. So I think they're, I'm just not that worried about um, elves going to war, and that's why I get rid of Thranduil. All right. Um, they allocate one eye, roll one more, and uh, I'm just moving the fellowship along. I want to move once a turn. I don't want to get hit. I'm only going to move on sixes, and uh, they miss me. Great. I think that's the first time they missed other than when I moved uh, over Moria. So I'm happy to see that. And now I can use these character dice if I don't want to move or attack with armies. I can use them to get the dwarves to work. All right, they muster an elite in Orthanc. I muster more in Rohan. They move armies around, uh, going into Fords of Aizen and um, Parth Celebrant, leaving Lorien just with a single regular. And uh, I just muster more. I just want to get my armies on the board. They attack into Helm's Deep. I go into Siege. And uh, they're still keeping a large force in Fords of Aizen defending Orthanc. So that's pretty cool. And uh, now they play Orc Patrol. They get a one. I would like to not take that damage. So I use um, Gollum's ability. And now Gollum has saved me two corruption, which is nice. All right. I hide the fellowship. They muster in Umbar. I muster more in Rohan. I'm just mustering up as much as I can. And, uh, and then I get the dwarves towards war with Gimli's ability. And they have now moved army. He, sorry, he, Jason has moved armies uh, into Druden Forest and East of Net. And I'm realizing, oh no, this army in Edoras, while good, is not good enough to stand against the Witch King. Or at least even if it trades one for one, it's going to get um, beaten up. So I, I really, I wished that I had maybe saved an end card. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to imagine how to... Um, have saved that. Also, maybe I could somehow get my companions up to help it with these two brave stands, but uh, it's just, it's hard to figure out exactly how to do that. Um, and my uh, my opponent knows I have no more scouts. There are no scouts left for me to play. So they can play big combat effects. And other than the single end card or daylight, you know, they, they can inflict a lot of damage. Challenge of the King, very useful. I can get rid of some eyes, but eyes have already been pulled out of the hunt pool. So I'm not sure that's so effective. I do, there are only eight tiles here, so I could possibly get some of those eyes. It's obviously better to play Challenge of the King when you have um, the red tile in the, in the hunt pool. All right, I don't know what I get rid of. This is a tough call. I get rid of Help Unlooked For and Heroic Death, which I hate to get rid of that. But I guess I just deem Brave Stands as more powerful. And um, and they got rid of Lure of the Ring, which, okay. They're just they're not worried about corruption, I guess. They wanted to save these other these other cards. Alright. Um, allocates and I rolls one more. I get a very flexible roll here. And though I am eager to move the Fellowship before they get a Nazgul or an army unit on it, I also don't want this army in Westamnet to get totally trapped. Because what was about to happen was Fords of Aizen, um, or like maybe East, probably Eastamnet to Westamnet, and then Druid and Forest to fold. And then this army would have had to attack out, and it would have been a mess. So I go ahead and start moving my giant army in Gondor just because I want to start threatening stuff and it's just makes it harder for Shadow to deal with. And by the way, I got six attacks this round, so that's very good. All right, they move into Fangorn and Eastamnet and they basically just don't want this army in Westamnet running north. They don't want it to get after Dol Golder or to get after Mount Gundabad, so... I think this is just a really nice play on their part. You know, yeah, maybe I can punch through, but I'm going to take a lot of uh, damage to this army along the way. So I end up just moving the fellowship and I sort of resign myself 
to this army in Westamnet being decimated, I managed to uh, muster up all of the Rohan force pool except for a single regular. And so, you know, hopefully these guys will just fight well and it'll make Rohan hard to take. And I'm still making progress with the Fellowship. I can still cause a bunch of shenanigans with this army. So we'll see how it goes. I move and I get missed. That's great. Westamnet attacked from the Witch King. It's a little risky because they don't have um, a lot of Nazgul with them to play Dread and Despair. And they they um, they don't have Swarm of Bats to cancel an end card. So I certainly could have an end card. I have five cards here. So it is a little risky, but um, they just play Dead and Despair. I don't have anything that I really want to play. I'm definitely hoping to save through a day and a night to use for the card effect. And Challenge of the King, I kind of want to use for the card effect too. And a single die for Sudden Strike just didn't doesn't seem worth it. So uh, I have no card to play. Theoretically possible. No, it's not even possible to kill the Witch King with Faithful Strike. So with only one leadership. So um, And I'm still making decent progress with the ring. So I'm, I'm going to hold uh, Bilbo's Song for healing and uh, Athelos maybe for healing, maybe for attacking. All right, so um, I get three hits. That's obviously above expectation. Um, he gets one, which is below expectation. So that was pretty lucky combat for me. And uh, I go ahead and muster the dwarves all the way to war because I would like to get that last Rohan unit, but I'd like to do it efficiently with uh, a, Gondor, uh, a dwarf also. All right, so... Um, they attack Westamnet from Fangorn. And here we'd expect them five dice, like one or two hits. Um, and they get four hits. So that's bad. Like, I don't want to be taking damage like that. And uh, at least I get four back. So that's pretty good. And then he presses. And I think he did that because he wanted to get um, an elite back into the force pool. So that he could muster just more elites in, in our thing. So, uh, I stay, I do one hit to him. He does none to me. And now he stops. Um, and now this army is just kind of sad. It's hard to know what's going to happen to it. I decide to attack Umbar because it seemed possible. Um, and what else am I going to do? I could, I could maybe muster. I don't know. This is a little weird. I was worried that Jason would just throw the army in Asgiliath at the West Herondor army and uh, just dish out some damage because I don't want, I really don't want to generally be doing battles when I'm getting hit on fives. I would much prefer to do battles when I'm only getting hit on sixes. Anyway, they move armies around. They're coming in to take out... Um, to take out Gandalf. And this is the moment where if I still had um, Path of the Woeses, I could teleport this army from Westamnet to Osgiliath. And it would just, it would cause a lot of trouble for them, I think. So I get a Dwarven Elite in Erebor. It's fine. And um, I attack. They attack into Erebor. I mean, into Umbar. And I get four hits and they get none against me. So... Rolling hot with these uh, Gondorian units. And um, and then he he gets one hit against me and I get two hits back. And then he and then he stops the attack, which I think is right. Um, musters in Dol Golder. I guess he's just afraid of the dwarves and he wants to get ahead of that. And uh, I muster more. So I have 11 hit points plus Gimli up there. And uh, I don't have any more elites to muster the dwarven. Force pool is not that big. All right, I get another ent, and I, uh, I really don't think I can get rid of this ent. I have to save one as a as a threat, and um, so I probably get rid of power of Tom Bombadil, and then I think I get rid of challenge of the king. Yeah, which is sad because I would have liked to play it, but you can only play it if you're in a Gondor Rohan region with an army. So, yeah, I couldn't have played it until, you know, until later if I managed to move Strider someplace, but I don't know exactly when or if that's happening. So that's why I got rid of it. 
Um, even though the combat effect is pretty good too. Um, allocates one, I rolls two more. I get a pretty flexible roll. Let's see what I do. I start by getting another uh, mustering. So I'm mustering a leader in Erebor and a regular in Iron Hills. Uh, he moves armies around. I muster more dwarves. He attacks into Umbar. This is a 10 hit point army with no leadership. And um, I don't really have great cards to play. Maybe I should play there and back again here. He plays a strategy card and it's... Um, you know, what do you expect him to play here? There is uh, Desperate Battle. There's Deadly Strife. Um, there's also Swarm of Bats. So, you know, Swarm of Bats, if I don't play a card, does nothing because he does not have a leader reroll. So this is a lot of boldness, and I think it's uh, really well played because in the end I play... Brave Stand, which is an incredibly powerful defensive card, and uh, he cancels it with Swarm of Bats, when if I had just not played anything, he wouldn't have gotten any bonus. Anyway, so he um, gets one hit against me, and I get none, none on f on 10 dice. That is quite unlikely. I don't know how unlikely it is to get no fives, but um, yeah, we do know it's two-thirds, in parentheses, to the tenth. That's seriously unlikely. Two thirds to the tenth. All right, let's take a look. I'm curious now. Um, I'm going to any dice. Can we see this? All right. All right, look at this. We want to know not this. We want to know what are the chances of on five dice hitting on fives with leadership five hitting on fives. What are we talking about? All right. I'm just making up an infer. Okay. Let's, let's see that. Wow. Any guesses? What are the chances? No hits on that? It is 1%. 1.73% chance of getting no hits against that army on on uh, on 10 dice. We would expect on average, the average is uh, this, 2.78. So, okay. Um, whatever. Uh, eventually, you know, over a bunch of dice, you might get an unlucky roll, a 1% roll. All right. Uh, how much does one hit point really matter there? I don't know. Um, I stay and uh, note that this army cannot retreat. I cannot retreat anywhere with this army, so I have to win this battle. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a little a little nervous now. Um, and he gets three hits against me. How lucky is that? I don't know. Uh, and I get at least three hits back. So, so that's good. And um, then he gets four hits against me, and I get three hits back. So, so this army in West Toronto is getting way above expectation and um, continues to press, uh, gets one hit there, and I get three hits back. So that is bad. Like, that was really bad. I had 15 hit points there, and now I have five. This army is insufficient to take out Umbar. So I did not expect it to go that way. And maybe I should have played Brave Stand. I guess my thinking with Brave Stand was it saves me effectively one hit point. And... Um, I don't know. Maybe I should have played it. I kept thinking I would be low on strategy cards and then I would want to, or just low on cards in general, and I want to play this just to draw more cards. But yeah, taking 10 hit points of damage before taking out that army, and I didn't even take it out all the way, is rough. And now the risky part is there's a seven hit point army in here and I cannot retreat. 
there is no way that this army can retreat. So that's nerve wracking. Um, I have to attack. So I attack into West Rondor because I don't want to be in a situation where if Jason chose to attack out of um, Umbar, that I would um, not have anywhere to retreat. And I do still have the Brave Stand, so that's something. Um, so I take out Wester Ondor. He gets a parting hit against me. And this is now just a really sad army. Uh, he starts drawing character cards, which is interesting. And um, I move the Fellowship once and get missed. That's fair. Less than 50% chance of hitting me on three dice. Now is drawing character cards like intensely. And I wonder, like, why not, if you're going to do that, why not just play the play the character, play the Palantir with a character die, and then use the Palantir, your Palantir, this Palantir, to, to um, play some card and get to draw an extra one? It's a little bit of a weird ordering. Also, I don't have a The Will of the West right now, so you'd get to draw an extra card. Um... He's definitely shifting focus to um, to corruption. I muster a what did I just muster? A dwarven regular in Iron Hills. Normally, you don't see three regulars in Iron Hills. That's pretty rare. And uh, and then I guess a regular in fold. I'm just mustering a little. Uh, elite in Dol Golder, smart. And then I draw a strategy card which is hard to do when you have five cards in hand and are about to end the turn but what else should i do with it i really would like to get fear fire foes book of Mazarbal is not useful anymore but fear fire foes would be great so that i can start mustering up in dale because i'm basically out of the dwarven force pool i have a single leader i'm basically out of the gondor force pool i have two regulars that i'm saving for maybe dead men of dunharrow and uh, I have no, literally no Rohan force pool. So I need the, I need to start getting the, the North to war. It plays Palantir. All right. So I'm happy to see power too great. That helps get the elves towards war. Makes it more costly for him to eventually take out uh, Lorien. And um, I assume I get rid of Iowa Golo and Kindred of Glorfindel. Okay, Fellowship is continuing to make progress. Allocates one eye, rolls one more, and I get this highly Palantir roll. It's okay. Um, I have power to great. I can probably draw character cards, and that's okay with me. Um, I get rid of the Palantir of Orthanc, which is nice that I did roll that Will of the West. I forgot about that. That's nice to roll a Will of the West against uh, my opponent having two Palantirs. And they attack in fold from the witch king which i don't i i don't fully understand like why not have more units with the witch king are you really going to take five against six you don't have that much leadership um he plays foul stench and uh and then i play nameless wood here because while I would love to get Saruman with the Ents, um, I can get the Witch King right now, potentially, because even if this doesn't kill him, uh, I can potentially then attack back with these with these units and and then kill him with a second attack. So I play Nameless Wood. He plays Foul Stench, and um, he gets two hits against me, which is good. Actually, sorry, three hits against me because he does not give up his leadership. To play Foul Stench. So he gets three hits against me. And I get three hits against him plus Nameless Wood. So uh, that is five hits to the Witch King. And uh, bye bye, Witch King. Should not mess with Ents. So that was huge. This is turn 10. Okay. Like, really good to stop the card cycling ability to uh you know you know kill the witch king that's awesome and now this army is free to roam i don't have any more hit points to give it uh because i mustered all of rohan but you know maybe it can come back down and reunite 
with this army in Umbar that got decimated. Um, I don't think it can recapture Minas Tirith, but maybe also if, if an army in Dale or somewhere up north comes down to Dol Guldur, maybe this this army in Fold can go up. Um, so anyway, I moved the Fellowship once. That's my plan, once per turn, until I make it to Mordor. And uh, my opponent starts drawing character cards, which is good. I draw character cards myself. We prove the Swifter is not useful right now. Uh, my opponent musters some Nazgul. I have managed to kill... Wow, how many Nazgul have I killed? I just have killed five Nazgul so far. That's pretty fun. Because I killed two in West Herondor. And I kill. Oh, no, maybe... No. Where are the other two? Oh, right. I, I, I killed them in West Herondor when they attacked into Pilargir. So there were two Nazgul with the army in West Herondor the first time. <laughs> I really like killing Nazgul in West Herondor. It's the Nazgul killing fields. Uh, so, yeah, four Nazgul so far killed in West Herondor plus the Witch King. Nazgul kill count is five. That's exciting. All right. Um, play power too great. Uh, no, think. Uh, pass. Okay. Muster. My opponent musters an elite in Dol Golder. And uh, I play power too great now. And then uh, they get an elite in Moria. I draw a character card. Eagles are coming. Not useful. I really would have liked um, any of the blue tiles would have been good. Um, Mithril Coat and Sting. Uh, maybe I can't play that yet if Nazgul Strike is out. Um, yeah, I guess blue tiles is what I want. I have played none of the blue tiles. I've drawn none of the blue tiles and I'm halfway through the deck. So, and I have this extra character die to do something with it. I don't know. Um, so they now move army units onto the fellowship, which makes a lot of sense. And uh, I attacked Druid in Forest. I don't know. What what else can I do? Uh, take out Druid in Forest. Go ahead, Rohan. And, uh, and then they play Shelob's Lair. So I'm not loving that. Um, they have played two red, uh, tiles and all of these low, beautiful tiles have been used up in earlier hunts, uh, because that's how it goes sometimes. Um, so they just, by the way, they just top decked Cruel Weather. Uh, you know, statistically they're likely more than better than 50% chance to have it by this point, but given that they didn't have it yet, it was pretty nice that they drew it this turn because this is the turn that I'm making it to, to Mordor. So um, I, they allocate one eye. They roll uh, no more. And um, I get this very nice flexible roll with Wills of the West. I do not want to lose two Wills of the West to Day Without Dawn, but I don't really need them super urgently right now. And um, as long as I move the Fellowship once, I'm okay. I'm going to try and be stingy with my rings as much as possible. If they ever get a bad roll, maybe I can, you know, do something exciting. At the moment, because this army in Umbar got decimated, I can't really do anything super exciting. Um, but I did get five, six attacks, so I have a lot of flexibility. Anyway, I move the Fellowship, and I do not get hit on a single die on a six, so that's fair. And... Um, and they move armies around. I play Elven Rope. I'm happy to at least get one blue tile in there. They're moving armies around more. And, um, oh, did I draw? Oh, this turn, this was the turn I drew Fear Fire Foes. Okay, well, that's cool. So I finally got Fear Fire Foes. They got, they got Cruel Weather. Let's call that even. Uh, we were both trying to probably get to that card. So I'm very happy to see Fear Fire Foes. This is going to be extremely effective. This army is coming down from Mordor to try and finish off uh, Gandalf and um, Aragorn and Boromir. And uh, I will be able to reposition them to safety and, um, and then get the north to war and then use these musters very effectively in Dale since I'm basically out of mustering in other places. So this is good for me. Um... And now that they are, there's no place for this army to retreat to. They weren't going to take out Umbar anyway. I would have taken a lot of dice to 
sort of merge up. I did think at the beginning of the turn, could I get to like this army druid in forest? Do I want to move out of Dol Amroth? Um, I haven't seen Corsairs yet, and I like I like giving the Fellowship as much time as possible. So given that this army got decimated, I'm sort of shifting into do everything I can for the Fellowship um, and, and more defensive holding uh, strongholds instead of trying to go out and take Shadow Strongholds because Jason has been defending very well. I have not had a lot of openings, uh, really any openings significantly to take out um, to take out armies. If maybe if that battle in Wester Rondor, uh, the second battle in Wester Rondor had gone into Umbar had gone better for me, then I would have also maybe considered going after Umbar, but um, Umbar was not meant to be. All right, so I go ahead and use the army muster die to play Fear Fire Foes, I think because I want to save this Palantir to draw character cards. I'm just going to like draw as many characters cards as I can before I get to Mordor so that I can play the blue tiles before I get into Mordor. That's my plan. So Fear Fire Foes, I now have a um, companion in Fangorn. And I have a companion in the Shire. And my uh, leaders who are, you know, my action dice are safe. And, um, oh, the other reason for saving this uh, Will the West is because I am now threatening Ents. Ents are turned on. And if I had saved that second Ent, I don't know how I could have saved it this long. Um, but if I had a second Ent right now, I would be able to take out Orthanc because... He attacked. Um, he attacked from West Herondor into Umbar to to uh, finish off this army, which makes sense to finish it off. But um, yeah, I just would have mustered. I just would have mustered an Orthanc first to be safe. Um, so sad for me that I do not have an end. This uh, battle in Umbar goes. I don't know. Probably a little in my favor. It doesn't matter too much at this point. And they free Umbar from siege. What there have been a lot of armies killed in West Herondor. A lot of hit points of armies killed in West Herondor. Um, okay, I draw a character card exactly. So I'm just trying to draw as much as I can. Shadow is moving. Gets uh, armies all over the um, fellowship. And um, I don't know exactly what he's doing. He's just sort of getting in the way of trying to go after Trollshaws effectively or to come south. And um, um, I muster in the north. I'm just mustering in the north like crazy. And um, he musters in the north also, more mustering in the north. And I do not spend a ring to move the fellowship again. I, if he has cruel weather, he has cruel weather. I'm not moving twice this round. Maybe it was worth it. Instead of using that um, Will of the West draw a card, I could have moved again. But um, he has more red tiles in the pool than I do. So the longer we wait, the more likely it is that I will be able to get more blue tiles in there. So I'm not in a huge rush to get to Mordor. And, um, and there's a chance he doesn't have cruel weather. I mean, there's certainly a chance. So I, okay, but he does have it. I get pushed back. I will get to move next round on sixes instead of this round on fives. And the number of turns does not seem to be mattering very much. It seems like it will be a while before he gets to 10 victory points. All right, I guess Smeagol helps Nice Master. Happy to see that blue tile. And uh, I assume I get rid of Gua here. Great. And now um, Allocates and I rolls one more. I get a Will of the West. I know that I want to move and I don't want to get that Will of the West snipe because I want to have a character die to be able to attack or do useful things with it. So um, I have enough musters to get Dale uh, in order. And um, yeah, so... I start by moving the fellowship and I missed. Maybe he has Nazgul search. Maybe he has Nazgul strike. I would maybe he has a tile drawing card. The tile drawing cards do not really reveal me because I have Gollum as guide. So an eye does not reveal me. 
these reveals do not reveal me. I obviously don't want to get hit by a three because that would be a lot of corruption. I don't want to get revealed into a stronghold, but he needs Nazgul search basically to be able to reveal me. Um, okay, he draws a character card. It's Worm Tongue, and uh, I start mustering more in Dale. He's moving armies now, and uh, is just there. I did have some options to like attack from Dale to Northern Rovanian and then play through a day and a night to No Man Lands, but he uh, very cleverly blocked No Man Lands from a through a day and the night play which is which is really quite i mean that's really foresightful i'm i'm sure that i mean i guess i'm not totally sure that's why he did it maybe he's setting up a um a muma kill the, the um like shadow gather but yeah i think it's to stop through a day and a night coming south too fast because this is a ridiculous army eight elites in that army is insane um Okay, I mean nine elites, nine <laughs> elites in that army. So this army can take out any shadow stronghold, possibly two, right? Like this can totally take it out. And if I still had the army in Umbar, this is the sort of situation that I'm looking for. I've, I've really had one big army at a time. It would be much better to have two big armies at a time. Um, so Jason has been doing really well, just whittling down my armies, continuing to just throw, throw his units at me to, to keep me low, um, and not have two, two big armies. So that's been, that's been played very well on his part. Um, but now what do you do about this gigantic army in Dale? Like that's, that's going to be a pain for him. All right. Orcs multiplying again. I play Smeagol helps nice master and, um, and then he moves. Uh, I'm not exactly sure just why one regular here. I guess it's just to slow me down. Just to make it hard for me to get there quickly with through a day and a night or with army movements. So um, I draw another character card. I don't love filling up my hand right before I'm about to draw cards going up to eight. But I'm declaring in Mordor. I want to get all the blue tiles in. I really, I want to get them in as soon as possible to maximize my chances of, of drawing them throughout my run up Mordor. Uh, okay, so he musters Nazgul. And at one point in there, once he drew one character card, which was Wormtongue, he knew that he wouldn't be able to play, play another one um, because... Uh, he didn't have any rings, and he only had one more um, Palantir. So I get into Mordor, turn 13. Nice, leisurely, leisurely walk into uh, hike all the way to uh, to Mordor. So one turn late for the Nazgul search. That was uh, a little bit sad for him. And um, and I'm happy to see Elven Cloaks. I would love to see Vile of Galadriel. That would be better. Uh, but still I'll take a, I'll take a blue tile and, um, I get rid of wizard staff fine and Nazgul search. Uh, sorry, he gets rid of Nazgul search and I get rid of, um, wisdom of Elrond. Confusion is powerful, but I can play King Brand's men and shield wall is probably better. And I'm definitely saving everything else. All right. Allocates one eye and rolls two more. So this is on one hand, a kind of bad roll for him uh but on the other hand he gets two musters which lets him get get the mouth of sauron and then use one of those musters to move armies if he wants and four eyes is uh is scary you know there there are four eyes in the hunt pool and so doing four corruption damage to me on step one is uh quite dangerous for me and I'm hid, I'm revealed. I mean, I'm hidden right now, so I have to try moving, or else I take one corruption automatically. And it's almost, you know, it's it's worth at least taking the risk. So um, I don't know if he was happy or sad to see these eyes. I think he's probably happy and is generally fine to go slow militarily. Yes, I have a giant army here, but it's going to take out one stronghold. But I don't know that it can take out two strongholds. Mordor is looking 
a little light, but he has two musters. He can muster up. So um, I start by moving the fellowship. Oh, no. Sorry. He moves the fellowship track back. All right. I start by playing Elven Cloaks. Right, right, right. So he only has one Palantir. I'm like, he's going to play a tile or not. Like, I still have, I think I have more tiles than him to draw. So that's why I'm doing it. All right, then I draw a card. Very happy to see Mithril Coat and Sting now. That is an incredible card. Saves you a lot of corruption. Um, I play Mithril Coat and Sting. So by the way, this was a very nice roll. Um, I had the Palantirs that I needed to draw cards. Is just this was a this was a good roll for me. Um, Nazgul, more Nazgul come into play. And then um, I attack Old Forest Road because, you know, I want to threaten something with uh, with this army. Uh, maybe I can go kill uh, the Mouth. The Mouth showed up in Dol Guldur. So, you know, that wouldn't be a horrible use of these armies. If I'm playing defensively, I can leave some behind. I can muster even more. I mean, the Northern Force Pool is good. I can muster even more in Dale. I can move these armies from Iron Hills into Airborne. I can defend these strongholds and still go and do stuff. And that's because I've just had a lot of dice. I've had a lot of musters. Um, I'm I'm able to have this gigantic army. All right, so I attack into Old Forest Road. He gets a hit back. It's annoying. Um, by the way, I have to be a little careful with these elites. So I only have a single northern unit dead and a single... Um, uh, dwarven unit dead. So I have to be a little careful there. All right, he plays Shadows on Misty Mountains in Mount Graham. Do not normally see that in Mount Graham. I'm thinking to myself, is he going after Rivendell? Is he coming east? I it's it's interesting. Um Okay, we'll see what happens. I have to try moving the fellowship. He does not have any um, Palantir left, and he has no rings, and he has no character die showing. So I know that um, it's safe to move here and and just see what happens. So my thinking is, because, because he's going, uh, I'm going to get to go last. So anyway, I move, and, and basically anything other than the red tiles or the eyes are fine. I will certainly reveal myself if I get a two or a three to save some corruption, um, but I get an eye. So taking four, I mean, that's just not good. Um, there were six tiles that would have been bad, you know, any of the eyes or the reds. And now do you redraw this? And I do not because I do not want to redraw into a red tile. And red tiles just are way worse than... Um, than, not, than even an eye. Like four reveal is bad really bad, but like Shelob or three stop is worse because it requires a whole extra pull. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, I, the fellowship is revealed and just took four damage. That's sad. He does have a uh, Morgul wound in play, but I waited to make that move until I saw that he didn't have any, uh, character or Palantir dice remaining. All right, and now um, he moves armies, and now at this point, um, I try for Athelos. I do not want to get hit with Morgul Wound, uh, if he does have it, which he's likely to at this point in the game. But at the same time, I don't really expect Athelos to heal so much, and I want to um, get cards out of my hand so that when I draw, I can... I can play them effectively. So anyway, I play Athelos. I expect one and I get lucky and get two. So so that is that is a lucky roll and I heal two. Um, Axe and Bow is not useful. I would really like to see there is another way. I would like to see um, the blue tile, the file of Galadriel, which is by far the best blue tile. And now I could really use the healing. All right. Um, my opponent, uh, rolls, uh, allocates night and rolls four more, three more. And so this is why at, at the end of last round, I did not hide because the rule is you only take corruption in Mordor 
if you do not attempt to move or do not hide. And since I knew that I would get the first turn and I was not at risk of anything bad happening to me while I was revealed at the end of last round, um, I could wait. I'm probably going to roll at least two character movement, um, to at least two character dice. I can h hide at the start of this round. And then if they did not roll many uh, eyes, I can move so that the you know the hunt pool is good for me and if i um if they do roll a bunch of eyes i can not move this round and wait until next round hoping that next round they won't roll eyes so i'm using the time that i have and i have a lot of time we're on round 14 and shadow only has two victory points and i still have a gigantic military threat like if they ignore this military threat i can go and i can go i can just march down to mordor and take uh, you know, take two strongholds here with this big of an army. Um, okay, so I start by hiding because I don't want to get hit with Morgul Wound or something like that. Um, and and now I'm just going to wait. Like my plan is not going to move again this round because I just don't want to risk another four reveal. All right, they draw a character card. So we're both playing the corruption game to the best we can. And... Um, they, interestingly, uh, it seemed like they got rid of maybe Bar, but then they changed their mind and got rid of Fighting Rurik High instead, which makes sense. And, uh, oh no, okay, what are they? Oh, they got rid of De uh, Denethor's Folly. That is a more reasonable discard. And uh, I muster a regular in Dale and a leader in... Um, Iron Hills. At some point, I'm going to start moving this army around with the spare army movement. I'll cover up in uh, in Erebor, but yeah, I'm probably going to play King Brand's men. So, all right, they do something that shocked me, uh, at least a little bit. They moved um, to Eastern Mirkwood with the mouth, with an eight hit point army against my 16 hit point army with five leadership. And I get the idea of I should throw hit points at, um, I should throw hit points at, at the free people. But um, I, yeah, I was surprised. 16 hit points I have. Um, and I have like, I have thing, I have full hand of cards. I can definitely play cards. All right, anyway, um, I don't attack them. I could, but I'm mostly just content to let them sit there. I want to muster up. I want to get my strongholds free, and then I want to make them chase me while I try and take out strongholds and hoping that I have more attacks than them. All right, so I play King Brand's men, and I cycle into daylight, and, um, and then they attack me, which... Uh, it just surprised me because I have, they don't have, like, they have words of power, I guess. Um, they have Ulog High, which I think they're probably saving. Uh, this was, by the way, turn one, right? They've been saving it, which I, I think makes sense to see where I attack. Um, and so they play character card. And then I play charge because, like, look at this, eight dice. No, you don't get to roll eight dice. You only get to roll five dice. But like eight elites, it was like, I had to play it. I had to play charge, just thematically correct. I have eight elites in this army. Look at this charge that I get. Um, charge, no hits. <laughs> the game is funny sometimes. No hits on a charge. I what more better setup? Like what better setup? Like mouth of Sauron is attacking into me, and then like I could annihilate him, but no, no hits on the charge. That's rude dice, and uh, he gets two hits against me. That's probably about what we'd expect on eight dice. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and I get I get three hits, which is very close to what we expect, um, a little better. Um, so he takes three. And now he's down to five hit points, 
which is not that many. I took two, so I just lose an elite. Uh, I'm going to resupply from Carrick probably or Dale. Um, and uh, and then I draw another character card because I'm just trying to get to the Vial of Gladriel. I want Vial of Gladriel in the pool before I move again so that I'm just maximizing my chances of drawing it. So I'm just drawing character cards. And I got Dead Men of Dunharrow, which is cool. Uh, but my opponent is not attacking in Pilar gear. And this is Sudden Strike, and I have five leadership. So now I have 15 dice to try and inflict five hit points. So watch what they do. They muster in Dolgolder. Okay, but are you not worried for the life of the Mouth of Sauron? Uh, maybe you should be. Gimli is like, let's try again, guys. Get your act together. Make a Sudden Strike. I play Sudden Strike. They have no productive card to play, which often happens. I mean, this is the thing about free people military attacking. Shadow does not, very rarely does Shadow have productive uh, cards to play. And certainly if you have Gandalf in the battle and they can't play Foul Stench or Dread and Despair because you're canceling Nazgul leadership, uh, they uh, just don't have productive defensive cards to play. So I have 15 dice to roll five attacks, uh, five hits. And my Sudden Strike does three, which is way better than the charge. Gimli is a good leader. And um, and now the Mouth of Sauron only has two dice, two dice to roll. So that was a huge Sudden Strike. And I get two hits on the combat roll. So, um, and they get one hit back. So that was eight hit points of shadow units plus another minion incredible incredible and if i had saved the end i could have taken out saruman there is an achievement by the way the the community uh has uh tracks some like crazy achievements one of them is destroy th all three shadow minions uh which seems ridiculously hard to me uh but i could have done it this game if i had managed to save an end as long as i as long as i did uh, anyway, I wasn't that patient with the ends. Um, and I think I chose the right cards to save when I did. It's hard to know for sure. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's awesome. So second minion, this is very good for me. Indirectly, that reduces the, um, corruption pressure on Frodo because Shadow has a one fewer die. That's you know, slightly fewer eyes in the pool, theoretically, and fewer Palantirs to draw more character cards. We're both down to only four character cards in our character deck, but we both have character cards that we're still trying to draw. The They have a red tile and I have a blue tile. So, and they might even have other corruption effects. I'm, I'm not sure. So anyway, Gimli moves in because at least it threatens Dol Golder. And now I'm like, aha, Gimli can move up reconnect in Dol Guldur with this army. I'm going to resupply Gimli with this army of Druid and Forest. That's a great army. And then I'm going to leave some hit points behind so that, you know, even if this army comes out of Mount Gundabad, they're not going to find two super easy targets. And by the way, I still have the Elven Forest pool. So at some point, I can break out of Lorien, muster all of these units in Lorien, and go crazy out of Lorien. So I still have military victory attempts at this point in the game. And the fact that there, there have just been some unprofitable attacks by, by Shadow. Um, and I've been playing cautious and I've been building up big military. So it's, you know, it is the right strategy as Shadow to throw units uh, at the free people. But yeah, it's tricky if you lose your minions. Okay, uh, they're still going to win the long game, right? Like if I never destroy the ring and I cannot capitalize on a military victory, they um, shadow wins in the long game. So so Jason has been playing, uh, you know, yeah, it's not good to lose your minion, but at the same time, whittling some hit points down, whittling some hit points down is good. All right, so they muster into Dol Golder and they have been saving for the whole game. Um Uluk high. And so like five hit points against this army, I might be tempted to try and take Dol Guldur. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So I'm, I attack Dol Guldur. 
Um, I finally draw the file of Galadriel. They do it. They have Isildur's Bane. So that is scary. That is scary in this hunt pool because they have um, three threes. I've never, you know, gotten a three, even though I certainly would have been okay killing off Gandalf to a three or um, even outside of Mordor if I had gotten it before, um, like when I was trying to get into Lorien, I could have healed up longer in Lorien if I needed to. Um, so this is a very dangerous hunt pool for Isildur's Bane. And I know Isildur's Bane could be out. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe he had discarded it, but he has wisely been uh, saving the crucial um, character cards. So um, I draw Emerhill of Dol Amroth, not useful uh, because I've mustered all I need. And Gondor allocates one eye and now rolls only one. So this is what I'm hoping for when I wait uh, to, um, to move, like ending the turn revealed. So it just gives me like two option, two rounds of hoping that he rolls a few eyes and over time he rolled fewer. So I'm much happier. This pool is much less scary if these three eyes are, um, only two reveal instead of four reveal. It's just less corruption damage makes the average corruption damage of this pool. Um, shall we calculate it? Um, let's just add up all of these numbers. This is eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, sixteen. But these are all these are twos. These eyes are all twos. Um, that's twenty-two. Let's count Shelob as a four. That's twenty-six. And then let's subtract one for Gollum's ability. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, minus one. Also for this negative one tile is uh, 18 corruption divided by 14 tiles. There are 14 tiles in there right now. So expected corruption damage is 18 fourteenths. <laughs> um, and of course, if I draw a red tile, I'm probably going to play Mithril Code and Sting anyway. But, um, you know, that's much better than whatever uh, 26 would be, right? If we add six more, uh, or 24 would be 24 fourteenths. Okay, uh, that was long-winded math. But I guess when I'm when I'm looking at expected corruption damage, I you add up all of the numbers and then you divide by the total number of tiles. And that's sort of your expected corruption damage on a single move. So taking about one or two per a little more than one. If I take a little more than one on each step, I can actually make four steps on average if I take a little more than one. So, okay. Anyway, uh, I get a very nice roll again. I have to be careful of um, Day Without Dawn. So I'm going to spend my first uh, Will of the West. I don't want to lose two, two dice to that. And I play the file of Galadriel because... Um, I want to get it in the pool. Maybe he's drawn the other red tiles that I haven't seen yet. Maybe he discarded them earlier, um, but I'm going to risk it. So I um, am happy to get my blue tile in there. I now have all four blue tiles, and I'm going to take four steps up Mordor with four blue tiles in there. Hopefully I will draw at least one. Um, but, yeah, so this is the problem. But... He gets to play Ulug High and defend um, Dol Golder. To some extent, I'm okay with that because I got so many attacks. Um, and my plan is to just sort of reconvene this army down south. My my um, The ring destruction game is going well enough at this point, depending on how this goes. I still have Bilbo Song to play. And by the way, I'm not playing Bilbo Song yet because... I don't want to be so low that if I get revealed or if I choose to reveal myself that I will end up taking two damage from Morgul Wound. So I'm saving Bilbo's song until I go a little higher. I'm not at risk of losing the game. I'm going to go a little higher above three because that's the threshold for um, Morgul Wound. Uh, I'm going to go above three and then I will start to um, use Bilbo's song once I am out of Morgul Wound range. Okay, anyway, because I rolled two Wills of the West, I couldn't attack into Dol Guldur right away. I wanted to stay focused on the Fellowship, and therefore uh, Jason got to defend um, Dol Guldur. 
He did have to use the Palantir for that. That was his only way of playing that card because it was an army card. And um, now he doesn't have a way to draw more character cards. He can he can play one, but he or he can play more than one, but he can't draw more. And um, this is also the value of the the Witch King being gone. Um, and also these musters now are just straight up musters, which he's probably fine with those being straight up musters because again, if he wins, if the game goes forever, then eventually Shadow wins. Um, okay, I move the Fellowship now because I don't want to sit around waiting anymore. Maybe that was a mistake upon reflection, but I thought to myself, okay, maybe he's just prioritizing the military over the red tiles. And I thought, you know, he could very reasonably have a red tile at this point. Um, if I thought about it really closely, maybe I would have thought that he would prioritize the military over the corruption at this point, but it's hard to know for sure. Um, so anyway, the hunt pool at this point is friendly, it, relatively friendly. These are the, the two red tiles are the only bad ones. I would be happy to draw an eye at this point to get it out of the pool. It makes the pool less scary. I don't love to reveal, but like the three is, is a two reveal just the same, right? Cause I'm going to reveal myself and, um, I'd rather get the eye out of the pool now and save the three reveal later. So that in case he has a turn where he rolls a bazillion eyes, uh, I'm not at risk. Anyway, uh, I move. I get an eye. Fine. Two reveal. Happy happy to get it. Um, and then he plays Morgul Wound. So I go up to six. That's not good. And then I hide now because uh, I guess I was worried about Lure of the Ring. I, th I think maybe there's also still Breaking of the Fellowship out there so there he has quite a few cards and I, he has other character dice showing so um yeah i don't want to give him more opportunities to play that and then he moves nazgul into dol golder uh making it a unattractive location and um and then now i play bilbo song because that takes me to four so that's fine i i had a bunch of character dice you know that were attacks had they been Palantirs, it didn't, it would also would have been okay. Um, yeah, when you're rolling six dice as free people and you're doing some military stuff and some fellowship stuff, it's pretty likely you're going to get um, what you need. And that's, I think, one of the big advantages of having six dice. Obviously, having more things total is good, but also just the flexibility on a turn generally to do the things that you need to do. Um, okay, he's mustering in minus Morgul and in Moria. So he's he's really appropriately anticipating where my attacks can go. And, um, and then I use this Will of the West to move armies. I leave one regular behind in Dol Golder just to have to make him waste an attack because that is now a reasonably sizable army. Uh, and I don't want him to have to be able to muster a bunch out of there. This just gets... The, um, this this army uh, merged up. I'm going to meet up in Dead Marshes. I'm going to have all my companions back again. Maybe we'll go after Umbar again. Maybe we'll go into um, Mordor. Who knows where this army can go. I'm not really super threatening a military victory because I have to hold two strongholds. Um, so... Uh, and then he starts mustering in Mordor, which is appropriate because that is absolutely my target. And I move from Iron Hills into Erebor. And maybe what I should have done is move into Dale uh, and just say like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go crazy with this army. I'm going to come down to Dol Golder and then I'm going to reinforce it with Lorien and, uh, and eventually take it out. So... Maybe that's a mistake. I didn't want to leave things too undefended. I have two regulars left in the Northern Force pool. Uh, and I have to be careful about being able to reduce these units because I only have, a, well, I don't have any, any uh, Northern uh, casualties. I've taken no Northern, wow, I've taken no Northern casualties. All right, um, Anyway, he moves this army from Osgiliath into 
uh, North Athelion, which I think is a good play. It it indirectly defends um, Minus Morgul, and I th I think it stops me from. Was there already a regular there? Yeah, I guess there was already a regular there. So, yeah, I don't have particularly effective through a day and a night plays because he's done a very good job scattering the um, the region with, with regulars. So I can't just get two free movement. All right, um, going on to next round. This is turn round 16. Finally draw a Book of Mazarbal a little late, but could be useful maybe to be able to move um, companions around if I need to. Um, and he rolls a whole bunch of musters, which is kind of what he wants here. Like maybe a few more Palantirs to draw and play the last two character cards. Um, he still has not gotten a red tile. Uh, Candles of Corpses is good. Oh, right. There was Candles of Corpses also. And I think Breaking of the Fellowship. So, um, And he still has Isildur's Bane, but but I think he's I think he's relatively happy with these musters with this giant army marching in. All right, I start by moving the Fellowship because I now have all my blue tiles in. The only tile, the only um, card that would help me in the character deck is um, there is another way which heals me for one. But I I don't I'm not in a rush. I'm moving slowly, and I don't want to give him a chance to put in more red tiles if he drew red tiles. So um, I move again, like expected damage is pretty low here. Uh, like really quite good. The two eyes, I'm fine taking two damage. I would be at six and then I only have two more steps to take. So eyes at two are, are manageable. I really just want to avoid the red tiles. And that's only, that's only two out of 14 chance. Of hitting the red tiles so um i'll just move and hit a red tile <laughs> yeah so you know that's sad i had all the blue tiles in i haven't hit any blue tiles i would have really loved to just save mithril coat and sting um i could take this um but getting stopped is bad i don't want to get stopped um so I use Mithril Coat and Sting. I mean, that's what Mithril Coat and Sting is for. When you draw a red tile, if it's like a scary red tile, which three and stop is not is not pleasant, um, use use a red tile. So many other things in this pool are are better than this. The only worst tile is Shelob. Uh, so I redraw into a blue, uh, which is nice. Uh, that feels fair. Uh, honestly, I. Sh the odds were better that I would draw a blue than than a red tile. This whole this whole um, march up um, Mordor, up, up Mount Doom. So zero is good. I'm happy to see that. Um, there we go. So the uh, the three goes back in, and uh, and then he plays Isildur's Bane, which is super scary. There are just like tons of things that could hurt me. And taking three corruption here, or like six corruption, is a lot. So this is well played on his part. There are just not that many tiles that are good for me. Um, but he draws an eye. So that is that is really unlucky. That that's just I mean, to, like that's about the same odds as me drawing a red tile on the last move. So in fact, it's he actually had better odds to draw an eye tile that move than I had to draw a red tile the last move because this was 2 out of 13 and drawing a red was actually 2 out of 14. So, okay, so maybe the luck balances out. Um, but still, like, that's, that's, that's huge. That's huge to not take 3 corruption or even more from Shelob. All right, um... So I muster because I'm not giving him a ring. Uh, I'm doing fine. I know at some point I'm going to draw there as another way. I have time. I'm not at risk of um, taking too much corruption here. And um, I'm just going to muster along. So he musters in Mordor. It's making it more less appealing. I muster up in Dale. 
uh, more mustering in Mordor. I finally get the elves to war because I'm like, well, I mustered all the northern units. I mustered all the Gondorians. I've mustered all the dwarves. I've, I've literally mustered like basically everything I possibly could. Time to get the elves to war, free myself in Lorien, and then start mustering there. And then I will have a real military threat again because I can attack out of Lorien and go either after Moria or go after Dol Guldur. And uh, this army is certainly going to be big enough to do something. So if you spend the entire game reliably mustering, you can, st and Shadow is not getting super fast military, you can actually have enough to create a military threat pretty late into the game. After this one, there's no more. <laughs> like, there's no more after after the elves. There's not a sixth nation that I can muster up. Um, but I'm trying to make good use of my resources. Also, my cards are, um, you know, getting used up. So, all right. I um, move armies. Okay, interesting. So, uh, it's an army movement. I want to move armies productively. I want to defend in Woodland Realm. At some point, this army out of Mount Gundabad can come down and start to get victory points. I don't know. This is probably a mistake because I'm going to, even if I vacate Dale or they take Woodland Realm, like they're not getting to, there's no easy way for them to get 10 victory points before I get to four. So this this is actually a miss, uh, an inaccurate perception of the game state. Um, I actually can go on the military offensive while also moving the fellowship slowly and steadily and um, and really go for a military victory here. All right. Um, so they muster an umbar. Yeah, I definitely was thinking that this army um, would could could come at umbar, but Jason is really properly defending, mustering a bunch. I mean, he did get a bunch of muster dice this turn, which was nice for him, given what was going on. Um, but he's he's mustering in the right places, and and he has um, his force pool. Yes, he's used up the um, elites, but um, he has managed to defend Mordor pretty well. And I don't have a productive way of getting past this army in North uh, Athelion. I think I go after Umbar again, just for revenge. I thought about going after Orthanc, but I don't have Ents. And this is a lot of elites. That's nine hit points. Uh, so, all right. Maybe it would have been right to go after um, Orthanc, though, because... Uh, I can't. I, I forgot that I have these units in Helm's Deep, that could have reinforced. So I could have done through a day and a night into Westmnet, and then attacked into Fords of Eisen and besieged um, besieged Orthanc pretty efficiently. Maybe that's better than messing around here in in Mordor. Uh, okay. Anyway, Osgiliath, and then um, and then he has Candles of Corpses. Only half a corruption that you would expect to do here because you're only hitting on sixes, um, but he gets a six. So that that is lucky, and that one corruption can make a difference uh, depending on if I hit another stop. Um, all right, he gets breaking. So he, had, he, he conveniently had his corruption cards in the end. These are still going to be useful to him now. And... Um, I had two good cards. I kept House of Stewards as Brave Stand because I anticipate having um, four companions in the battles that I'm doing. So I kept that over Daylight and uh, Book of Mazar Bowl is not, not needed. All right, so he allocates one eye and rolls only one more. I'm happy for eyes to be only two damage. That is sustainable. So I move and uh, I get a three. I'm going to reveal myself. I'm hoping that earlier in the game he discarded lure, he discarded breaking. We'll see. But either way, I'm going to reveal. Um, I take two and a reveal. And, um, and he does have breaking. And, uh, you know, he just, he just drew that, actually. And I notice that he does not have any other character dice this round and no other Palantirs. So I can... 
maybe he has a red tile as his last card, in which case, um, or maybe, the, you know, this is a red tile Barog that he's been waiting, saving for a long time, though. Probably not a red tile. Uh, so I could, if I think that his last tile is a red, last card is a red tile, I could hide now and then be prepared to move at the start of next round. Um, or I could hope that that's not a red tile and then at the start of next round, wait and see how many eyes he has because there is one eye tile. And if he rolls three eyes next round, this eye tile is deadly to the, no, it's not because I have, there's another way. I'm, I, I didn't draw there's another way, but I'm guaranteed to have there's another way. So yeah, that's probably a minor inaccuracy here. It's, it's probably better to hide because looking at the hunt pool, all right, I guess if he rolls four eyes, if he rolls four eyes, then this eye is deadly to me, even with there is another way, in which case I've now turned what is possibly a, um, you know, a winning tile into a, into a dead tile. And otherwise I can wait and see what he rolls. But odds of him rolling four eyes next round on eight dice, seven dice are pretty low very low. So yeah, probably better to think that's a red tile. All right. Um, yeah, I think I miscalculated slightly forgetting about there's another way, which I know I'm going to draw. Um, okay. I say, sorry, it's late here. My brain is slow. Yeah. It's pretty late because I've been, this is turn 17. All right. So I attack into South Athelion because, um, he has two musters he has um, the elites to muster into Umbar. I just don't think I need to go that direction. He has many kings, which is pretty awesome. So he can he can muster in Umbar that way, reinforce the siege with many kings. Um, so I go after Mordor because it's hard. It's just there are more places for him to have to hold. And um, I don't play a card because it's just one regular. And he plays incredibly he plays deadly strife which i mean that is showing a level of awareness of the situation that is amazing because this is a single regular it's a single regular against <laughs> against the biggest army like this is an absolutely insane army that i have i have not i have six elites three regulars 10 leadership and he's playing deadly strife for me and um it's a beautiful play and this just shows how skilled of a player jason is because he is he's never going to want to play deadly strife when there are a lot of units um when there are a lot of units in, uh in play like he doesn't want to risk losing his own units like he knows that this unit is dead anyway, right, against this size of an army. So all he's doing is increasing his chances of whittling away this army in Osgiliath. You know, it increases by one third. He's giving himself one third of a hit. And the analysis is this combat card, which is normally an incredibly powerful combat card, does not matter at all because I'm low on, I'm low on reinforcements. The only thing that matters is stopping the fellowship, which he can't do any more than he already is. He's going to draw his one remaining character card next round and play it as soon as he can. And he just has to stop military victories. That's the only thing. So this potentially, all right, anyway, I've talked about this enough. I just, it's an incredible play. Corsairs of Umbar for Deadly Strife on a single regular unit. I mean, unbelievable. And it's correct. Like it's absolutely correct. In my opinion, I, th I think it is correct. Um, anyway, and then he rolls a three, a three. So he gets the hit. Like it actually mattered. It actually mattered. I loved that play. Like so good. There are many plays of the game, but like that is incredible. All right. 
so satisfying to see that level. All right. Anyway, so I take my hit. I, I kill him. I annihilate. I get five hits against that one regular. I mean, of course. Fine. Um, bold, bold orc. All right. And then, again, Jason is properly defending, moves his... Um, you know, significant stack into minus Morgul and and holes up in and Baradur. So at some point he's gonna hopefully probably try and lose a elite unit so that he can muster uh more in uh one more. Either get a regular in Baradur or an elite, whatever. This army has to go through uh minus Morgul. Prob probably can do it. Um, and I've absolutely saved these brave stands for that purpose. Um, and I, and I don't need to play by the way, I never ended up, I saved great company for a long time because of the combat effect. Um, and I never played it for the card effect because I didn't want to use up my, um, my hit point. And also I had enough strategy cards. So, uh, I'm happy in the end to be playing it as brave stand. It's quite powerful as brave stand. If you have four companions, it's incredible. All right, I go ahead and attack out of Lorien because I want to use these musters. And I want to get into a situation where I have two big armies and can do useful things. Uh, I don't play a card. Jason wisely plays Durin's Bane because uh, it can inflict some damage. And it gets two hits. So the Balrog gets two hits. And uh, I take out the Orc. And now Lorien is free. Elves are at war. And I can just muster, muster, muster. I have no need to draw any more cards. I'm going to draw my last card at the start of next round. Uh, okay, so musters are regular in minus Morgul and and uh, Berdur just to get that full a uh, full stack as possible. And um, he has, uh, I guess, I guess he just wants to keep that as full as possible. So I muster an elite in Lorien. He uh, musters a regular, I mean an elite in in um, North Dunland, which is a very good way of defending Moria. And I muster another elite in Lorien. And then he attacks out of Dol Golder because he wants to free this up. And also he, he, he properly does not want me to be able to play through a day and a night, which I surely have at this point, and then move into Dol Golder with this arm, army already on top of it. So um, this actually costs me an extra attack next round. So he's, uh, and it's going to let him muster into Dol Golder to refill this army to make sure it's as full as possible. Um, so he's, he's really playing well here. I get one hit. That's fine. He's actually probably happy to lose that elite. Um, or not happy, whatever. He, he loses, I guess he loses a regular. No, he downgrades an elite into a regular. That's fine. All right. And I continue mustering in Lorien. All right. Another elite in North Dunland. Round 18. I draw my last card, which is there in another way. And he draws his last card, which is the ring is mine. Uh, so those are pretty good. Uh, he also, interestingly, as a strategy card, drew The King is Revealed, which is a very effective um, mustering card for Shadow as a, a defense against military victories. We saw this in game one as I was attack as he was attacking in Minus Morgul, and we're going to see it right here, I, I suspect, um, as well. So it's a, it's a very effective um, mustering card. All right, I get rid of um, Mighty Attack. It's a little bit of a waste, but so be it. Um, rolls only one eye, and I get two movement. So, and a bunch of mustering. Uh, I don't really need that much mustering. I wouldn't mind having some attacks, but so be it. I, I'm, I'm in an okay situation. There's not a huge rush. If I had more attacks, I maybe could have gone after um, Dogolder, but all right. I, I start by hiding the fellowship in case he has uh, Lore of the Ring or something like that. I, I don't know. Just, I yeah, I, th I think he might still have Lore of the Ring. So I start by hiding. Um, and then he plays the ring as mine. So, you know, I guess it was this was just a miscalculation on my part from, um, from last round where I just shouldn't have expected him to have uh, that many 
uh, roll that many eyes. So, but, but then again, maybe this is okay because if he had rolled four eyes and I was revealed, maybe it still would have been better to, no, it doesn't matter. He, the, 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 if there isn't a red eye tile, then it doesn't matter. So, okay. Uh, probably should have hidden last round. So I could have moved first thing this round in case that last card was a red tile, which it was. So now I'm like, ah, uh, that was sad. Now there are three red tiles in there that caused me to not win. Um, but still I have, um, what I have nine, nine out of 12. So I have a, th I have a three fourths chance, 75% chance of just winning by moving. So, um, so I move, it's super late. Let's end the game. Um, I think about using my Palantir. Uh, I want to play, I want to play. There's another way for this move because, um, I'm not worried about my ability to hide or, you know, next round or move next round in case a red tile gets up. But in case uh Shelob gets rolled or gets drawn, I do want to have as much healing as possible. Um, because, uh, you know, I don't want to lose. So might as well heal up. And that's why I'm using the Palantir. Uh, this also lets me use the character die to attack. And, um, notably he has spent all of his character cards, which means power to great can never be gotten rid of. He can never get rid of it. But, and I talked to him after the game, he knew that he did that on purpose and his point was, it doesn't matter. If the fellowship can't destroy the ring, he wins. If the, if, as long as like, there's no military victory, that's, that's what matters. The only thing that matters is stopping the fellowship from destroying the ring and defending on military. Otherwise he's guaranteed the win. So he's properly playing his last character card to get it into the hunt pool, to maximize my chances of drawing it. I play there's another way. I heal one. He has to draw a red tile to stop me. And uh, he does. And it's the eye. It's the red eye that he put in, making the choice to never be able to get rid of power too great. And um, and that's awesome. I mean, I don't, it's not awesome for me, but like in terms of awesome for how exciting the game is, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so, um, pretty cool, pretty cool play. So he's just, he's just playing to the odds and doing his best. And now, and now this is scary because if he gets two, uh, only two eyes, if he rolls two eyes next round, now this eye goes from a winning tile for me to a deadly tile for me. So, um, I'm definitely going to stay revealed now. And that way it gives me two turns, two chances for him to roll only one eye, in which case this is a winning tile. So if he rolls two eyes next round, I'm going to just hide. And then if he rolls uh, only one eye next round, then I can hide and move and then just hope to dodge the red tiles uh, again. So that's the, um, that's the plan. And in the meantime... I can also, if he rolls a bunch of eyes, I may just go for military because I can now empty out all of Lorien. Uh, he attacks out of Minus Morgul into South Athelion, thinking that he can play the King is Revealed to refill. And I only have one attack. So, um, you know, that's the thinking. Let's empty out some of these extra units. And um, I play Brave Stand because I don't want to take, I have enough cards. I don't want to take damage now. I want to I want to be able to preserve the strength of my army so that I can just take out Minus Morgul in one, uh, one fell swoop. He does get a six. Uh, I get three hits back, about what we expect. And I mean, he shouldn't get a six, but whatever, one third hit. Uh, and then he does not press. And now at this point, I, I can tell he's going to refill that. He has, at the very least, musters or other things. Um, I thought that I attacked there. That's interesting. So that's probably a mistake. Um, I should have I should have attacked into minus Morgul right there when when he only had 
you know, three extra, three surplus units. And then I can easily potentially do more than three. And uh, it wouldn't really matter because he has, he, he would definitely do a field battle because he has um, King is revealed. But I still probably should have used that character die to attack at that point. Okay. Um, he plays King is revealed now. And uh, I just am mustering up my elves. And I have, by the way, uh, mustered everything except for this one northern regular, which I am intentionally not mustering because I have three elites here that I want to be able to downgrade when I'm continuing the combat. And I have only one regular in the force pool. I mean, in casualties. So if I... Um, if I muster that regular somewhere, like up in Dale or whatever, then I won't be able to um, downgrade. So that's what I do. Okay, anyway, he's attacking into uh, Gandalf again. And uh, this is the correct play on his part. And it was my mistake for, I'm seeing it now, for not attacking into Minus Morgul the first time. So he's just repeating what he's doing, which is whittle down this army, whittle down this army. If this army is whittled down, then um, it can't, you can't get a military victory. So um, he does not get hit this time. I get three hits, which is what we expect. And then he stops. But he's used up my second um, Brave Stand. So... That's a little, that's a little sad for me. All right. I attack uh, into Minus Morgul, which is what I should have done before he remustered. He has a field battle, which is absolutely correct. I played Daylight. Uh, I get only one hit and he gets one hit back. I press and at this point he goes into Siege. I think, yeah, I guess that's correct because he did play, um, he did play uh, the King is Revealed. If he had saved the King is Revealed and simply mustered an elite in there normally, then he could have gone longer in the field battle. That might have been slightly better. I don't know. Uh, okay, whatever. He's now under siege. He has seven hit points and I have 12. So I have one automatic hit with Mighty Attack. Not ideal. Um, he should be able to hold this and I waste that muster die. So that was a muster die that does nothing because I do not want to muster that regular Northern unit. And otherwise well, just that, I mean, I've, I don't recall a game where I've mustered this much. All right. He moves armies into Gorgroth to prevent me from, um, using through a day and a night to move there and then attack Baradur, which is an easier target. So that's a nice play on his part and he just uh i guess i'm not exactly sure why what the other movement was all right he he draws new powers rising and um rolls only a single eye which is key and i get this roll which is um quite flexible he almost certainly has day without dawn by now if he hasn't discarded it and um I want to have the opportunity to destroy the ring without uh, having to spend a ring. That was funny. Uh, to destroy the one ring without having to spend an elven ring. So with my um, Will of the West, I hide the uh, fellowship. And then I would have, if he didn't, so he plays Day Without Dawn here, which, which I think is absolutely correct. But if he didn't play Day Without Dawn, I had enough dice to use through a day and a night to Western uh, Brownlands attack. That, so uh, through a day and a night is one. Uh, Western Brownland uh, th through a day and a night to Western Bl Brownlands is one. One die to attack into Dol Golder. Uh, they would go into siege. Another die to attack Dol Golder, uh, possibly with this big of an army, possibly taking it out in one attack, and then another attack in um, minus Morgul to, uh, so with four dice, I could possibly get four victory points. Um, and yeah, so I could do that if I wanted to spend a ring. I didn't roll quite enough attacks and the more likely, uh, I think the more likely victory attempt, so he plays Day Without Dawn. I think the more likely victory attempt is um, 
just trying to destroy the ring. Uh, Shelob kills me if it rolls a four or higher, but otherwise none of these tiles kill me. I can reveal against the three stop. So I have a very low chance of instantly losing the game if I try and destroy the ring, and I have a good chance of um, winning the game by destroying the ring. So, um, yeah, maybe it would, yeah, it might have been more interesting to, to go for the military victory after this whole game and the whole um, challenge. And you can see, like, I definitely had real military chances um, at the, at the very end, I mean, this is turn 19 and I still have military chances. And if I had played these, um, these units differently, uh, to attack Dol Golder, like absolutely have real military chances now. And he, and he only has two attacks and no rings. So yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting. So I um, I play through in a day and a night to go after Western Brownland, and then um, he musters an elite into Dol Golder, which is certainly correct. And then uh, I try and destroy the ring because it was really late and whatever. It might have been slightly more interesting to attack into uh, Minus Morgul with this army to see what happened, but it was late. Let's end the game. I need to not draw a red tile, please. And I draw Smeagol helps nice master. So uh, way to go, Smeagol. Um, if I remember correctly, there were two tiles outside of Mordor that that um, Smeagol or Gollum helped me. And then there was one tile in Mordor um, that that he uh, revealed to, to save corruption. I drew a lot of eyes in... Um, in Mordor, um, I, I, uh, red tile redrawn with Mithril Coat and Sting to get the blue, and then another I, and then a three, and then another I. So, that said, though, one of those eyes was really good for me, which was his Elder's Bane. Um, okay, so that was the game. What an incredible game. With that, I won third place in the War of the Ring Championship, uh, world, in, the, in the War of the Ring uh, World Tournament 2023. So uh, I, feel, I feel pleased with that. Thank you to Jason for these very interesting games. Well played. I think this was uh, a, a really excellent demonstration of how to defend against a strong, uh, you know, I got a really good start, a strong Free People Military Victory attempt. Um, really good plays down in Umbar to take care of that threat. Um, you know, there were a few maybe overly aggressive attacks with minions. Um, but overall, I think this was, uh, played really well. And I think this shows like the, the very tight balance and tension between the, the military and the corruption. Um, if Jason had leaned a little more, towards doing corruption damage, I, um, I, I would have, you know, I could have taken more corruption, but I might've won on military. Like there were, there were definitely chances that I had militarily. And certainly here at the end, uh, I, I could have had very real, very real military chances here. Um, okay. So I just want to show statistics so we can see, uh, I did, I did check, and um, these these are uh, reversed. So it surprises me a little bit that I rolled that many more combat dice than him, but when I checked at the beginning, uh, when I was doing a test, this this was reversed. The the shadow when the shadow rolled for the hunt, they got um it got allocated. Okay, never mind. This is all this makes sense. Right, right, right. This is shadow. They rolled more dice. <laughs> shadow even in military attempts, shadow will roll more dice. So great. So these are reversed. I was plus eight on sixes, uh, minus seven on fives. I didn't attack strongholds ever. 
I besieged some strongholds. I definitely besieged Dol Golder. I besieged Umbar. I besieged uh, Minus Morgul. But I never, I never actually attacked into a stronghold. So th that plus eight for me on sixes didn't actually matter. Um, and it was balanced out by the minus seven on fives. So you can see the combat, the combat luck was pretty balanced. Um, I did very well on Wills of the West, uh, which we saw benefiting me uh, early in the game. And because he did not get Day Without Dawn for a long time, uh, that was certainly a boon and uh, just gave me a lot of flexibility. Otherwise, uh, low on musters, but I ended up using Wills of the West for mustering quite quite a lot. Um, he was very high on musters. You can see really high on musters, low on uh, character. I think this probably all worked out. When you're facing a free people military victory attempt, it's not bad to be high on musters. I don't I don't think. So I, I think our all of the luck around the actions and the dice rolls they, they they balanced out pretty well. I would say this is pretty pretty fair. I think I had a good start. Like that is absolutely the sort of start you would have if you're going for a military victory attempt, and you saw the sort of balanced game that it ended up producing. Uh, so I look forward to the tournament next year. Uh, Thanks again to Jason for these these really great games. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this was a super long video, uh, but turn 19, turn 19 ring victory, everything mustered, ridiculous. So I think there were something like three or four achievements that were uh, achieved in this, in this uh, game. So epic game. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed watching. Have a good rest of the day.